start ma'am start good afternoon welcome you all to the job shadowing season 1 episode 2 of the year 2021 where we are having our very own alumni interacting with the present students all of us are aware that experiential learning is gaining importance in learning through observation and interacting with the environment students get an opportunity to reflect and conceptualize independently job shadowing is one such method of experiential learning we have been organizing in a school for the last few years geographic information systems or gis is the most powerful technology of geoinformatics today rooted in the science of geography GIS is a framework for gathering, managing and analyzing data. It plays an important role in planning, organization and decision making. As said by Jack Dangermond, GIS is awakening the world to the power of geography and bringing us into an era of geographic enlightenment. Today, we are extremely happy to have Ms. Amrita Mundal with us. She's from the batch of 2009 and I fondly remember her as a student who took keen interest in geography during her school days. She completed her BSc in geography from Lady Brabourne College and pursued MSc in GIS and remote sensing from Symbiosis International University Pune. She has nearly 5 years of work work experience. Amrita was a GIS analyst in Mumbai when she started off her career handling real time data and involved in data processing troubleshooting planning and designing maps related mainly to commodity data she then moved on to being pre sales business development executive and specialist her job involved playing a critical role in the growth of the company mostly through competitive analysis in all her professional years she has gained knowledge on myriad concepts like gis excel and other data science tools she loves being creative painting and music are one of her favorite hobbies her other interests include food photography traveling and baking it is my pride and pleasure amrita to introduce you to my current batch of geography students over to you amrita thank you so much for those beautiful words ma'am i uh, remember school as something of a second home i can't describe that in words so um i will move on to describing myself a little more telling about myself a little more um so as mentioned correctly i was i started off my career as an analyst and i am from the field of gis uh later on i moved on uh to being a pre sales uh business development executive and currently i am in the role of specialist uh there are three different companies which are involved uh all of them are part of the gis field and uh, the current company i will uh, i am working on um is i am working in snp global that is standard and poor and uh, that being an mnc company it has a global presence uh snp global plats is uh, mainly related to a leading independent provider of information benchmark prices and analytics for the energy and commodities market data so they have for over 100 years they have brought clarity and transparency to the energy and commodities market how is geography related to it uh, they have a gis division and uh, location and data are the most important thing to any company any organization and which is why we have a wide presence of geography uh, throughout the world right now so when we are talking about geography when we are talking about location data all are intertwined uh moving on to my second and third companies i will talk about them uh, a little in my uh, presentation that i have prepared so i will uh, share my screen 
and I will present uh, my first presentation, that being myself. And the second presentation will be uh, primarily focused on the topic that is GIS and remote sensing. So let me uh, share my screen. So I actually started uh, my journey uh, from MBG. I have never changed school from the very first uh, day. I remember being very, very uh, scared. But then uh, the environment of the school was very nice. I had some lovely teachers. And that was the only thing um, you know, that a student requires that you don't feel isolated, you don't feel left out when you are in school. So MBG has given me wonderful memories and I can't begin to thank how grateful I am to the school that I was admitted to by my parents. Moving on from MBG, I completed uh, my BSc in geography um, and that was from Lady Bourbon College. And I did one year cartography specialization uh, from Baligan Science College as well. And uh, those were also very, very nice days. Um, very, uh, you know, enjoyable. Um, as a college, we tend to think that uh, there are no studies. Well, let me tell you, LBC <laughs> was a place where there were very, very strict teachers. And uh, we enjoyed that. We really enjoyed that. We were, I was a very sincere student, so I did not mind strict teachers at all. And moving on from that was uh, my journey to symbiosis, um, all the way from the eastern part of the country to the western part. Uh, 2015 to 2017 was uh, the batch that I belonged to in symbiosis. And uh, that was a very different journey. I learned a lot um, about organizational behavior. Um, and also about personality development. Uh, there was a lot to learn in Symbiosis apart from the main course curriculum, which was GIS and remote sensing. So uh, this was basically my educational background. Apart from that, I have completed many certifications in uh, Excel, in Power BI, in data science. Uh, Symbiosis, in fact, has data science courses now. If you visit the website, uh, they have started, uh, you know, these uh, data science and spatial analytics course. So we'll talk about that in the next presentation when I'm talking about GIS and remote sensing. Uh, next, let's come to my work life. Uh, the first company uh, through campus recruitment was Cybertech. That was in Thane, Mumbai, Maharashtra. Uh, we got uh, placements in December 2016 and um, the batch of symbiosis got over in 2017. Uh, the convocation was December 2017. So the dissertation and the final job offer placement came at Cybertech. Uh, Cybertech was a place uh, where it was technical customer care support and uh, we had a lot to learn and i really really being uh, you know honest cybertech is a place where you can really learn if you are looking forward to a gis career as a starting point so moving on from uh, cybertech uh, i was there for two and a half years there then uh, i moved to scanpoint geomatics limited that is sgl uh, that is in ahmedabad um, they have their proprietary software, uh, which is IGIS, and uh, Cybertech uses ESRI software, uh, which is ArcGIS. So those are two very different softwares that we used. And uh, you can um, actually, after SGL, I actually could differentiate and compare the importance of the different softwares and how they play a critical role. Uh, moving on from this SGL, I continued my journey to uh, SNP Global Platts Division. Now, SNP has basically four divisions Platts, Market Intelligence, uh, Jodones, and Ratings. I am in Platts Division, which mainly handles commodities data, 
and commodities data uh, what i mean by that is agricultural uh, gen fuels pet chems petrochemicals oil natural gas so these all data come under commodities data so that is uh, the work journey so far which has been very interesting uh, very informative and i have really groomed myself in a much better way uh, from cybertech to plats so in total i have around 5 years of work experience now uh next i'll just uh, highlight about my hobbies here so um i like playing indoor games i'll be honest i'm learning chess thanks to uh the lockdown uh, i have focused on learning a few different things uh baking is again one of them uh second i like painting i like traveling a lot uh but covid has uh, reduced that chances i like reading any any uh, piece of material that interests me um especially uh, we will say magazines articles non fiction books so and i like photography especially food photography as ma'am mentioned so because i am a foodie and that is the reason um so these are the few hobbies that i have uh moving on very quickly i remember this is a collage that i have uh, i had made this is a photo that i have of my accolades and i'm really proud of that uh this was our simbi um uh you know 14th convocation ceremony uh, mr arun jetli was the special guest and we were very happy and these newspaper cuttings are forever cherished in my heart which my school gave me and i am forever grateful uh this is uh, these are the trophies that i got from amul uh vidya bhushan award and uh, this was when i came first in uh, simbi geoinformatics now symbiosis has many branches of institutes we were a part of geoinformatics group uh institute of geoinformatics so i came first there i was very happy and uh, this was this is our dean uh, mr tarun pratap singh tp sir and this was one trophy that i got for um, you know they were actually true uh, best on job training and second was uh, for quarter 2 so that really made me happy uh, so this is a little about me and uh, you know i will move on to my next presentation um and i think that um after the presentation um you can shoot me with your uh, questions so let me just uh, move on to my second presentation very very quickly okay so uh, this is basically an overview of uh, gis and remote sensing um now when we talk about uh, gis we basically mean geographical uh, information systems now um, as if we were already uh, you know had a few liners in the beginning that this is basically to organize communicate or understand the world when we enter the world of gis we must understand one thing that these are the few components of gis and uh, location uh why gis is basically popular is because uh we are continuously monitoring locations the data the amount of data that people have today is enormous and the location of that data is very very important so uh these are the five components the hardware the system that we use the software the application like the proprietary software of sgl igis or esri or um, any other software basins any other software so these are uh, the data that i rightly mentioned and the people that is us uh, where we stand uh, in the field of data how we understand it how we interpret it which is why um, gis is very popular and it is also welcoming people from all walks of life uh, by all walks i mean all streams there are engineers there are mbas um they are mostly engineers and civil engineers uh so it's very interesting to see uh, commerce science many people are involved there uh moving on we have why is it important 
because uh, let's face it gis actually does solve real life problems and that is what people need more than anything else so it helps to identify problems for example using gis we can monitor map get a pattern get a trend and understand uh, what is the big issue uh, for example i very clearly remember the beginning of gis i beg your pardon uh, when cholera was there in 1800s there was um, a person who was trying to figure out what caused that particular cholera so what he did was he did two simple things he just overlapped the maps of the area with the road and the water network that gave him basically a location which is again the most important thing when we are talking about gis uh, and that gave him a particular location as to where the water tank is which is causing the issue so that is how we identify the problems uh, we also uh, manage and respond to events using remote sensing and gis uh, using thermal imagery we are now being able to you know respond to volcanic events we are now able to respond to any particular fire forest fires and uh, next monitoring the change i myself have worked uh, on two projects of glacial change uh, where satellite imagery was uh, the key role and there they taking different years data uh, say 5 year 10 year gap satellite images uh, and they have different bands and the particular study will reveal how much glacial ice or the glacier itself has retreated so that is how we can help monitor the change and uh, then you have understanding the particular uh, trends so say um, i want to open a shop and i have no idea where i'm going to set up the shop so you have to have few uh, parameters of data you have to have uh, the demographies the uh, economic data the socio economic profile and you will also have to understand the road network and everything which is surrounding your shop which you are planning to open that will give you a understanding of what is the trend where is my customer base and arcgis has a very important uh, you know uh, what will i say an extension which is business uh, analyst and that and business intelligence unit which helps to understand that how these businesses are set up and most of the businesses now are actually using gis to set up their uh, particular uh, you know location because if the location is not good uh, nothing is going to run um and then we move on to perform the forecasting uh, i will talk about my experience here again my client was amul india uh, we helped in performing forecasting by estimation of the fodder crop so again satellite images are very very important uh, in this and we uh, gathered satellite imagery uh, we use gis that is vector data and uh, digitize the entire imagery and uh, process how it is done and there are models which the software is built and that gives you a prediction which is a forecast as to say in 2022 how much is going to be my yield of fodder according to that how much is going to be my revenue that is going to be generated so these are the ways uh, the softwares really help us in understanding that how uh, things can be which are challenges in the real world can be uh, you know uh, curtailed and we can benefit from it without being uh, you know spending lakhs of rupees on that and also setting priorities uh, setting priorities i will say let's take the example of crime analysis crime analysis is very uh, important nowadays so uh, usually the police station uh, say california i am saying police station which i had done in my dissertation what they do is they map charts you must have uh, seen hotspot analysis so this is something like that there are hotspot analysis which the computer performs arcgis has hotspot analysis and when you have the location and when you run the hotspot analysis on that you will have a blue shade and you will have a red shade so that will tell you and set your priorities that also comes uh, in understanding patterns 
where the crime rates are high, where the crime rates are low. So that will prioritize your day's work that where should I pay a second visit as a policeman or a woman. So this is why GIS is very important nowadays. And uh, so, yeah, moving on to my next slide. Uh, GIS has different data types. So the data are basically into two branches, uh, spatial, which has location information in it. And second is the attribute, which is say the an Excel, a Word document, which doesn't have the uh, attribute information in the sense location is not there. Spatial data will only have locational information. And uh, in that you have three different uh, categories. Spatial information which has location will be divided into raster and vector, which I'll explain in the upcoming slides. And attribute, which is non-spatial information, which does not have location, are the tables, which can be made spatial when the location information, the X and the Y, longitude and latitude are put in. The moment X and Y data is put in the attribute or the tables, it becomes a locational data. Uh, so now I'll explain a uh, brief about vector versus raster. So uh, this is a vector line which has three main data types, points, lines, and polygons. So uh, when the points are connected with these lines, these are the nodes, and when they are connected, they become the lines. And when it is complete, that is a polygon, that is closed path, especially. Uh, next is your uh, raster types. Raster types are basically uh, when any particular image, I'm not talking about only satellite imagery, say you take a selfie of yourself, that is also a raster image. Uh, satellites are raster images. Uh, if you scan something, if you Xerox something, take a picture of anything, that is a raster image. Because that particular image has certain amount of, um, you know, mm, digital numbers what we call it so there is a scale uh, if it's a colored image um, then it will have a range of numbers uh, usually what we have is 0 to 255 all right so when we divide the image like how do you know that we divide the image and how is it uh, these grid locations are there and everything uh, you take a very bad image um, of yourself or anyone or anything and then you zoom it to the highest level you will see that it is pixelated it will have small squares that one particular square will have according to the computer software when you uh, transform the data will have a digital number so when you zoom in this is the image space now when i zoom it to the highest level this is the uh, coordinate space and that will have a digital number. Now these digital numbers are nothing but the different shades of the images. So here the vector, when it is zoomed in, you will see that this has these particular, um, you know, grids that happens with points as well. And that happens with polygons as well. And these uh, different shades, this is the blue, this is the yellow, this is the green. So this is how it will be allocated that is allocated by the computer software itself, but it has a number. Uh, next, moving on, uh, is remote sensing. Remote sensing is something which uh, will be, I will say that um, anything which can be, you know, seen through the uh, bare eyes is remote sensing. Our eyes is basically is also a remote sensor. And uh, therefore, remote sensing is something like from a distance, if we can sense a object, like with the help of our eyes, when we see an object, when we um, you know, have information about that object without a physical contact, all right? That is remote sensing. So our eyes are also basically scanners. X-ray machines, that is also a scanner. So um, this is how the remote sensing process works. Uh, sun is our energy source at um, any given point of time, our natural energy source. Now, when the sun's ray basically interacts with the atmosphere, there are different targets, trees, our cells, our houses so there is a target interaction with it and that 
gets some of it gets reflected back as we know all of it doesn't get absorbed some of it gets reflected back that reflected energy gets captured by the remote sensors which is the energy detector after that is uh, captured now that remote sensor which we can see here in d has different types of sensors they uh, some have thermal sensors some have short wave infrared some have long wave infrared uh, so these are something which is uh, will be studied in detail maybe when you study later but just understanding the basic thing that these have different types of sensors and they capture that energy which is reflected by the earth's surface and that data is basically transmitted transmitted to the ground and transmitted for further processing and interpretation that is how uh, we get the satellite imageries in uh, different colors the imagery that we get is in rbg format red blue green format but then we do an analysis and interpretation using different filters on that so that we understand more and more information there are filters which will help us detect the edges which the natural photo which we see a colored photo will not help say for example i'll give a very prominent example that i had worked on was um there was a taxation that was supposed to happen now we are thinking that how taxation is related to remote sensing well the basic fact is um when you use thermal imagery then uh, there is a some certain amount of heat that the thermal sensors catch and suppose my house now it is in use but for several years when it is not in use it will not reflect any heat because there is no electricity in the house so that will not reflect any heat if in the image uh, it is reflecting a heat we will uh, understand that there is someone who is living there but not paying the taxes and hence the tax municipalities have started using this thing uh, especially pune and other areas what they do is they catch hold of the thermal images wherever there is unnecessary brightness or lighting and they know they have a record that this particular house is not in use they will go physically check that house and they will uh, if they are to be uh, you know evicted or convicted whatever they will do it so that helps in solving few crimes as as well so that is how it is useful and uh, it is also uh, very important as i mentioned earlier in agriculture and in many sectors we'll see that in the upcoming slides so basically the importance relies that remote sensing is very very important because it is uh, repetitive you can use it again and again the sensors once they go up in space they are there for several years and they can be used in um, weather in communications um and in also detecting i i am sure all of us have seen the movie uri and we know how gis plays a role in that movie uh, and in real life of course in defense like um, so that is how uh, it plays a role so if you watch it for the second time because we are gis people we are very happy seeing the movie uh, but if you watch it for the second time you will understand that how gis is playing a role and importance in that uh next uh, these uh, are different types of satellite imageries i will not go into the details but just to let you know uh sensors are basically divided into two parts active and passive sensors passive sensors who which uh, use sunlight as the energy source and active sensors which do not need any particular light source they have their own light source uh, one of the most prominent and popular is lidar uh which is uh, basically used for a uh, very minute mapping they have 0.25 cm accuracy uh, to be uh, you know the least that can be possible i have used lidar data it's a heavy data but it gives you very good accuracy and these are the passive sensors again divided into low moderate and high resolution and now low resolution is basically uh, the modis av hrr which are for the uh, global coverage which is used for uh, your vegetation purposes for your weather communication uh, when we talk about landsat which is moderate then you have uh, basically um, when we are trying to find out the health of a vegetation through the process called ndvi 
the differential index, the natural uh, differential vegetation index. So moderate resolution Landsat is basically used for that and for many other purpose. And high resolution is when we are say doing urban mapping and planning. Um, two very prominent ones will be Iconauts and QuickBird. And as we go to more and more higher resolutions, the sensors are more and more costly. And active sensors uh, are very, very costly, but very, very helpful. Um, next, we move on to how this entire thing works. So this entire thing works. Basically, uh, there are tools and they have people. We GIS people have a common goal. Uh, we are using, I have used the word actionable intelligence. Uh, it's just that to extract information from the location. Whatever information we get from the location, we try to extract that. Say, for example, you get a call. There is an emergency. The first thing we ask is, where are you? So this is how GIS is also intertwined with the location and the data aspects. And so there are basically four pillars that the GIS has. Uh, so that being map, data analysis, and apps. So if I just go very quickly, maps, uh, before maps, I will uh, take on the data. I have explained it uh, that how data is important. Any type of data, uh, spatial, non-spatial, when we uh, plot it, it becomes a map. And when we analyze that map, that is the part of the analysis. And there are different types of analysis that can be done. Uh, it can be a vegetation analysis. It can be a water health analysis. It can be a soil analysis. Or it can be a general neighborhood analysis, a very simple neighborhood analysis that where my house is, where is it surrounded, um, how are the roads looking, how is the accessibility, or anything. And when we integrate the first three, and bring it to a particular platform that is called an app. For example, uh, you will see that ArcGIS has ArcGIS Online. So that is a platform where all these three, uh, you know, intertwine and present itself. Uh, next, we move on to this part. Now, who uses GIS? I will say that uh, GIS uh, is at still a very natskin stage in India, uh, but people are slowly uh, understanding its importance. Um, and so ESRI has a very important role to play because all the schools and institutions have ArcGIS uh, software there. There are also many other softwares uh, which we have worked on. And uh, IGIS is there, Basin software is there, Whitebox CAT, that is a software. Uh, there are many softwares, Airdus Imagine. So these are very, very good softwares, uh, Leica for photogrammetry. So keeping in mind the different types of uses of the software, these are the sectors where it is primarily used. Uh, I won't be uh, having the time to explain all the sectors, but education, we know that we are at a learning stage. Health, of course, when we um, you know, uh, understand the area, the uh, particular health, a particular disease spread, like I mentioned, the cholera incident. Uh, then like, uh, let's take up um, gas and utility. This will come, uh, come under uh, ArcGIS has uh, many tools which will help us map the channels and uh, water, natural resources, telecom. I can't even begin to thank telecom for using GIS. And that is how Ambani's are Ambani's. We are very helpful. Uh, we, are, we are actually very lucky to have telecom at our side using GIS. Uh, real estate, yes, of course. Uh, the prices of the um, flats of apartments vary according to location. Again, geography has a very role to play, very important role to play. Uh, you will have uh, retail and many other things are related to the location itself. So uh, because we get so much different types of information in GIS, not just one type, and you can interpret it in many different ways using so many different filters that the softwares have, it is basically applicable to all uh, the sectors that is listed here. Uh, natural resources, I'll just give one very simple example. 
uh, with the help of uh, you know remote sensing there are very high images which are generated and they have very uh, high resolution and there are different layers to those images so when we study that on the software you will be able to understand that these are the different types of minerals that is uh, found in a particular area so that is how it is also used for identifying natural resources uh, next will be the uh, application of GIS and remote sensing. So I think there are many, many applications of GIS and remote sensing. Um, I will um, tell you one thing, site selection. Um, site selection, as I explained earlier, was the business part of it. Like if I want to set up a business, a shop, that site selection and all the parameters that, that has applications. Uh, watershed analysis, the project that I have worked on. Uh, now, we can't just um, set up a dam or set up a place where uh, the water will just go and filter and collect itself. If I am planning to do uh, planning a watershed, there are many things that I need to consider as an analyst or as a person in power. I will have to analyze the slope. I'll have to analyze the aspect, which direction the slope is facing. Uh, I will also have to analyze the particular, um, you know, elevation, the topography of the area. So these are the different layers that uh, and information that I will be getting from remote sensing. And uh, therefore, when we add all those layers, when we combine all those layers, which is called overlay analysis, you will get a result. The software will give you uh, three to four different locations. Um, after you have given the parameters and run, um, I'll say 10 different tools. And that will give you three site locations that these are the three sites where you can build your watershed. And out of that, as a human being, as an analyst, you will have to analyze. There is where your part comes in. As an anal analyst, uh, what do you think is the best course of action? So that is how the uh, watershed analysis is there. Uh, I'll emphasize one thing here. Corridor selection is very interesting. Uh, say during the uh, war, say there is a war, and now that technology has become the technology it is, very high tech, uh, the flight has to go from point A to point B without getting detected by the enemies. So there, they will, um, th there are softwares which will help you uh, detect a flight path where you won't be detected by the enemies. So there you have uh, a lot of parameters to consider. First and the most important thing is topography. Second is the elevation. Third is the width and uh, the size of the aircraft. And after considering all of that, the software will generate a path, two or three paths, and you will have to choose the best course of action. And so that is how. Um, second, logistics routing. Logistics routing or transportation modeling is something that I will say Google Maps. The best example can be Google Maps. It will show you, show you the shortest path or uh, Nokia here maps. They will show you the shortest path. So that is the transportation modeling. And um, rest is something which is very much related to it. Land management, as I said, the taxes. Uh, network analysis, incident mapping, the crime that I mentioned. So that is basically uh, the it. Uh, so therefore, this concludes my uh, topic on GIS and remote sensing. So I think now we can proceed for the questions and I'll stop sharing my session. Thank you, Amrita, that was indeed I think I need to step in here, Amrita. Uh, I'm Mrs. Shaha, the principal of the school at the moment. And I think you had us absolutely gripped, floored by sheer expertise and the knowledge that you shared today and your presentation. So I have been marveling at the fact how so many young people are engaging with us for this job shadowing initiative. And this is the first time that we've called on our dear ones, our ex-students, to come back, back to school series, as we've named it, and your season one, episode two. <laughs> but uh, what I marvel on is the amount of effort, 
labor that you've put into this presentation, not taking the younger students for granted, not taking your teachers for granted. So I really salute you and say thank you for that, for the effort, for the trouble that you've taken. Mm -hmm. And what really flowed and took my breath away was your passion and dedication to your craft. I will not call it your profession or your vocation because you've really made it into your craft, something that you've designed for yourself with love, with dedication. And this is the commitment, the care that I hope our young ones will bring to their chosen field, whatever career they choose for themselves. So I really thank you for taking this time. And I have yet another request, Amrita, that sometime, whenever you have a little free time, if you can engage with our school and students and take a couple of classes, because that is when you will connect the subject with the dynamic field that geography is all about. Geography is life. It's living. It's right there. It's not trapped in the pages of a textbook. And that's why this connect is so very important. So if young people like you who are in the field, who have chosen dynamic professions for yourselves, can come back and take a couple of classes online. You don't have to visit the school campus, though we would love to have you back physically on campus. But till we can do that, please engage with us online. I'm sure our teachers would love this idea of our young ones coming back and taking class when you have a little bit of free time. This would be your service, not only to students, but I think it would help to connect you with your passion and your school all over again. So thank you on behalf of Mahadevi Birla World Academy and over to students. I do hope you have some questions ready for a young expert here. So over to you, students. And thank you, Amrita. Well, I it's am so thankful that I was given the opportunity. And I hope I did not bore anyone. <laughs> I not know I can just uh, get going when I start the presentation. That's so the best I am happy. So I haven't left it. your session. Uh, I'm busy with so many <laughs> things that I've been glued in. And it's been absolutely wonderful to watch and be there for your presentation. So over to you, students, now. Thank you. Raise your hand, sir. Okay, Shreya, please proceed. Yes, Shreya. Unmute yourself. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, my question to you is, what elective subjects we should choose with geography in our graduation if we're interested for studying GIS and remote sensing in MSc? Okay. Uh, well, the uh, colleges have different electives that they give. Um, when I was in Lady Brabourne College, uh, the electives that was offered was economics and um, there was also a part of statistics. So I would say that if at any point, uh, given point of time, you are looking forward to GIS, uh, try to take up um, maths in your 11 and 12, economics as well. And if you are offer, uh, offered with the opportunity to uh, take up maths in your graduation along with stats and economics, that will be very, very helpful. Because uh, down the line, um, remote sensing has a lot of physics uh, to it. There are many formulas which include physics. So hence, many engineers find it very comforting and not completely out of the blue that what is GIS or remote sensing. So they are very familiar with that part. So if you can take electives which are uh, maths, which are statistically related, uh, that will be very helpful. Thank you, ma'am. You're most welcome. Okay, next we have... uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I would like to know that what are the programming languages which uh, we should know in order to uh, pursue uh, GIS? Like that is extremely important in this field. Yes. So uh, slowly and gradually, uh, GIS is um, also, you know, getting intertwined with spatial data science. And uh, there are two most important languages that has helped me. So I will recommend what I have learned and helped me uh, is Python and uh, is R. So these are the languages and these are very simple languages. Uh, I'll be very honest, programming, coding scared the shit out of me at one point of time. <laughs> but I will say that uh, learning Python and getting to know R, where uh, that was introduced to us in Symbiosis. And uh, that is uh, very, very um, 
you will say easy languages to learn which as non coders i am a, i was a complete non coder um so that was very uh, you know satisfying when you really learn r and uh, you learn python because they are very easy language and you can actually understand what the output is uh, compared to c sharp which i had taken a course on and uh, halfway i could not understand what was happening <laughs> but c sharp was also taught to us and gradually we also got a grip of it uh, but i will say that yes uh, r and python is what really helped me thank you very much ma'am and in fact uh, i feel very glad to know that because i recently started learning python and uh, so uh, it's great that you said this because uh, like initially when i was starting uh, to learn that language even i felt that like what is the utility of me learning the language but now i feel it will be useful definitely if i pursue this career yeah when you actually start uh, with the basics uh, things might not make sense but uh, when you input uh, uh, you know gis into it and when you get the output because all are lines of code and there in those lines of code you will have to put in the locational data given your file path and then when the output comes out you will see that these were the lines of code and this is how uh, this map got generated through use of codes and not just by clicking tools so that is something interesting you can look at see now now even in cbsc we have this subject informatics practices they in that to the in the curriculum only it's included python is included that so is you very new language nice. and a uh, language and that is included okay well next we have arag rag yes ma'am ma while pursuing bsc and msc uh, what was the most difficult part for you that you faced uh well <laughs> that depends uh, if you are asking in terms of study or in uh, terms of moving from one city to another <laughs> or both no, you can tell both if you would if you wish <laughs> right so um i'll start with the studies um the studies was um, it was a transition from the typical textbooks to the digital world uh, there were no books um so that was completely uh, the digital uh, platform where we had uh, the tests where we had uh, the uh, books and google was our book and uh, we had very nice teachers who really guided us uh, the challenges is when you know you are in school or in college at the most you get a lot of help from teachers from your parents and many people your friends but uh, when you are at an msc level where there is a competition of job that help tends to decrease and you are on your own so you really like to uh, that is a little bit challenging but you really uh, uh, learn being independent so that is a lesson that uh, you can take positively and secondly yes moving from one city to another i love pune uh because of the weather that pune had and because of the environment that we had of symbiosis it was wonderful you had students from all walks uh, all different uh, countries you had students from afghanistan you had from africa you had from europe uh spain hong kong china and it was a mixed bag and there were different parties which used to happen from symbiosis itself so you got to know different cultures different people there was a different experience so it was it was really really nice when we go to uh simbi and that is uh you have different cultures there and i've also heard that iir is there adun is also very nice i am not sure i don't have people with whom i can connect there uh, but i have heard uh, from many alumnus who we share uh, the gis field with that ir is there don't is very nice but i will vouch for simbi because i am a simbian thank you ma'am you're most welcome uh, now anybody else is there priyanka okay priyanka good evening ma'am uh, ma'am i wanted to ask can you suggest a few courses for us beginners so that we can get a bit more understanding about gis and remote sensing 
yeah um hi priyanka good evening um i will suggest uh, courses which have helped me in sindhi and you know when we were in symbiosis we had uh, a tie up with iars dehradun and they have youtube channel um so if you subscribe to that youtube channel every year they uh, uh give out uh, live sessions uh, there are videos which are 2 hours long don't get scared by that but it is very helpful the teachers uh, will teach you from the scratch and uh, you will learn so much from that youtube video i was surprised myself because there was uh, the live sessions were there in sindhi but i had uh, missed one or two because i was off sick so there i uh, logged back to youtube and uh, because i had lost a trail of thought as to where the course was heading so i started from the very beginning and you will understand that it is so helpful um that they will start with the very basic to very high level which i recently attended was machine learning as well but it will be explained in a layman's language you have to uh, be very uh, you know um, uh, you don't have to know anything if you want to attend that course you just be there there are certifications courses as well but um, we have done certifications but if you just want to learn for now because i think it's too early to even uh, focus on that uh, but if you really want to get going just start with the youtube channel that is very very helpful iars dehradun they have a lot of videos thank you ma'am you are most welcome so uh, amrita's heart uh, lies in senapati bapat road right <laughs> i think my so my heart lies in all the places that i have visited uh, that actionable intelligence forever. that you mentioned <laughs> it will it will forever remain to calcutta where i actually began i am not going to forget my roots <laughs> good that means 17 darga road actionable intelligence say yes. they told me that <laughs> yes the footstep starts from there right It's from there good connecting the dots okay we come back any more girls you can ask questions we have some time uh gargi is there uh shreya is there again okay gargi gargi you can good evening ma'am uh what is the process to get admission in remote sensing and gis can you please uh, enumerate on that yeah hi gargi um so that depends on um, you know which uh, institute you are looking into um simbi has um IARS will require i believe if you are an um, science students if you are a science students or if you are masters very recently you can go to their website they will have a pdf where they have um you know uh, listed the qualifications the last that i had checked during my time so i will not guarantee it has not changed uh, they required msc um in um gis and in geography so because iars is a place where uh they have a lot of advanced studies and they have a lot of um very very good teachers who are uh, you know very much from the science background so they look for btech mtech and even if you are from the geography uh, you should be able to cope with it so irs is uh, that sort of a, a place and um, the qualifications will also require i think 60% throughout uh, the graduation um symbiosis is a more professional area where you have again very amazing teachers and symbiosis requires um, the latest came out on the instagram page um so you can check out symbiosis uh, into instagram page or visit their website sig.com uh, um and there you will have the qualifications the latest qualifications which i believe 60 to 65 throughout uh, so 50s to 60s you will have to have it is always uh, better to be on the safe side and uh, that is the criteria for spatial data science for msc geoinformatics uh, you can be from basically any field because uh, gis uh, encompasses different fields that 
come together so in our batch we had commerce we had science we had arts so that is how check out their websites that will be very very helpful thank you it's merging together from our mm-hmm. stream it's yeah. becoming interdisciplinary yes okay uh, shreya you can ask your question yes ma'am um what are the colleges offer gis and remote celsic in india other than symbiosis or iirs uh other than iirs and symbiosis there are many uh, institutes which offer uh i will say in calcutta you have jadavpur which has a cad center and jadavpur has this particular uh, cad center which is very nice there are people uh in cybertech also and in simbi people completed from jadavpur uh, they worked for few years and then moved to simbi for higher studies uh but apart from that um you can you know um google if there are any other colleges that are very prominent in india there is one college in uh, south india um that has recently opened a branch that is iisc bangalore uh now iisc bangalore uh, i have been there on a two week workshop and uh, worked on the glacial part and remote sensing so they have um uh, gis and remote sensing there so apart from that um i don't think that there are many very good institutes in india because it is at a very you know baby stage i'll say uh but if you look into um outside india there are many many good universities uh you have canada from where gis began so you have canadian universities you have sheffield university um you have uh, german universities which are very nice and they are very mathematical and applied based uh they are not the textbook types or uh, not the theory types they are more focusing on the practical so i will say same goes for iirs and simbi and iisc uh, they are very practical based they don't believe in theory that much uh, because theory can be uh, you know mugged up and written but when it comes to practical uh, i will prefer those particular institutes thank you ma'am you're most welcome any more question last question you have one or two minutes left so okay somnath go ahead Uh, yes ma'am uh, ma'am what what in your opinion should be the most important quality in a gis analyst um well most important quality in a gis analyst i will say that uh, from the word analyst i'll say the power of analysis which uh, when broken down uh, gives us um, two different things one will be accuracy and one will be the keen eye for details and uh, understanding the different uh, you know uh, phenomena that is going around uh, applying your logic as to what will give you a, a brighter picture that how is this thing going to figure out or why is this map looking like this not like that or even if we we are on working on excel and uh, maps can be built on excel as well a dashboard can be built on excel so uh, the keen eye for uh, uh, you know detail will help us uh, solve problems more efficiently and you will have a picture a wider picture as to the things which are looking that way are they really looking that way so say for example in excel you have a pivot chart you have a bar chart a column chart that visual interpretation should be very easy and so for an analysis this is our job to make that visual interpretation easier so you will have to have the logic and the accuracy and the keen eye for details thank you amrita indeed a learning uh, session enriching learning session and thank i you. think our girls also must be benefited from this session yeah uh, talking about also... uh, yeah i'm sorry to interrupt i was just uh, you know googling one name uh, i had forgotten that name um, i think shreya asked the question about the institutes yes ma'am yeah so um, there is also another institute uh, in uh, meshra ranchi 
birla institute of technology so mm-hmm. that is also a very good institute you have another institute jamia milai in delhi these are the two names that i actually forgot to mention so these are very good institutes all the uh, i think uh, geography colleges um, in delhi are good but uh, just keep in mind that uh, do they offer bsc or ba because uh, many places where you are going for higher education i don't know they somehow prefer bsc because that is a bachelor in science than bachelor in arts so and if you are looking for um, placement uh, areas that who which offer placements then that will be mentioned in their respective websites so just search for uh, gis and remote sensing colleges in india you will get a list just go to their websites and search that what is the criteria and just have an overlook so these are the few names that i have forgotten to mention and sorry <laughs> rupa ma'am i interrupted you it's all right now we will all share our feedback with you amrita and we will also we would also like you to continue uh, this uh, session this enriching session with us in long run Uh, most probably as mom have mentioned already she has already mentioned that in june july if you can take some online classes with our students so that will uh, create a bridge between the present and the past student thank I you i will be so happy I... to more than happy to <laughs> thank you thank you and uh, I'd like now to i also hand over thank you. okay just shomdatta so it was indeed a pleasure listening to you amrita and i would like to tell all our presence today now amrita was took took keen interest in the subject and especially her practicals so this is something as she said you have to develop an eye for detailing so it starts from the root level so when you are doing your practicals these days you find very difficult to make your complete your practical work with great precision so please do that you have a bright future if you can really take up gis and there are a lot of other avenues also from geography which you can pursue in your future years okay okay yeah, now that uh, you know you have so many prospect with yes. geography so over to shom dakta now uh, yes ma'am uh, ma'am we are indeed extremely privileged and honored to have you with us here today and uh, you have inspired all of us to explore the plethora of opportunities uh, that the world of geoinformatics bestows us with on uh, behalf of the mbwa family i take this opportunity to convey our heartfelt gratitude to you for taking time out of your busy schedule and conducting this wonderful session it was indeed an enriching experience and a road map for us to help us plan our future better thank you once more for enlightening us i thank principal ma'am and vice principal ma'am for this excellent opportunity i would like to thank our geography teachers for their constant encouragement and the office for their support 